the failure of women, the conspiracy of silence. Another day, another heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, depressing story of a wife being brutalized by her husband, a minor being sexually abused by her employer's husband, another being systematically raped by her male relatives, a father having carnal knowledge of their daughter, the hired hand committing statutory rape with his employer's daughter, or the boss groping and making indecent suggestions in the workplace. I could go on with these scenarios, but we are well conversant with them. People argue that with the advent of social media, we just have access to more information, not that these occurrences were less in times gone by. March 8th was Happy International Women's Day, a day set aside to celebrate the woman and the achievements of the movement for the emancipation of women the world over, I guess, in a nutshell. Okay. A lot has changed from 1909 when the celebration was held and from 1977 when the United Nations adopted the International Women's Day. Today, women not only have a day in a month, but have also usurped the whole month of March as Women's Month. Wahoo! Velisco, the Dutch fabric maker, even has a fabric for us with the inscription, all women, all united. The celebration brought women's issues to the fore with a call for action to government, especially. However, bringing it home, what exactly have we done to raise the voices of our women, ladies and girls, apart from overflogging the word empowerment? The Ministry of Women Affairs was established in 2000 with a very wish-washy agenda encapsulated as bringing development to the women and children. The crassness of the reason adduced for setting up a toothless, barkless pup of a bulldog is what is wrong with the ideals of the International Women's Day and its celebrations. What exactly are we happy about? The tokenism of the idea that there is a place of circle for the Nigerian woman to address her issues is infuriating. As 21 years down the line, I want to see a scorecard of what the Ministry of Women's Affairs has achieved vis-a-vis -vis International Women's Day. The rate of sexual crimes against women and the girl child is on a frightening trajectory. It reflects what society thinks of her female. The person to change that perception is we women, but we need strong voices strong leaders and commitment. I expected to see the Ministry of Women Affairs pushing for an amendment of the bill that gives 14 years jail term to a rapist to move to castration. Today, I woke up to the story of a boy who partook in the gang rape of a 16 year old a couple of years back. Four of the five boys have died and he feared he was next. He had murdered sleep and was seeking her forgiveness. He put a picture of her begging. He put up a picture of her begging that she forgives him and then he would reveal himself. The rape of her started all over again. This is where we have failed people like her. She had to relive the story in public. The woman in the chain of her story told her there was nothing she could do to help her after she had helped clean her up and treat her as best as she could after the horrendous assault. She never reported the incident. The four dead never face the law. As it is, neither will this one. Sexual crimes go unpunished because we women have become the enablers. I feel very passionately about this subject. It's quite unfortunate. And I actually and I will the job open the floor to the silence. Um, for you to start first. <laughs> All right. Um, Comfort, you mentioned that um, we are complacent in the silence. Yes. When I read, when I read it, I, I felt that I felt that. Um, Olaimi, are you sure you're doing enough? Are you sure you're speaking out enough? Uh, most of the time, we are just horrified about this news that we, we read online. But do do we take time to even leave a simple comment in support of the victim, or a simple comment asking the government to do more, or telling our husbands to stand up? Because I, I fear that. We may actually need the men to actually stand up and do more because if I speak out, I need somebody to actually echo and say, yes, keep on going, keep on speaking out. Because, of course, I might say something and I fear that 
how will I be accepted after this, but, even in the workplace? But you know one very funny thing? Her dress is too short. Why did she go there? Oh. And who says it? You'll be shocked that a lot of times there's a woman. So you have the woman blaming the woman for what someone, someone had criminally done to her. It shows that there's, there's a really big problem of articulation of these issues by people. Um, right now, I'm, I'm reading the moment of lift by Melinda Gates. And uh, she's been around a lot of women. She's come to Africa, spoken to a lot of people, done a lot of research. And one of the things she says is, the woman does not even have a say, or many women do not have a say in how many children they will have, the spacing of, in that sense, they do not even, they do not have ownership of their own body. Well, for me, uh, what caught me in uh, Comfort's uh, script has to do with when she said that all these things have been happening before now, but it appears social media has only helped to bring it out in the fore. And it actually struck me because I tell you what, before the advent of social media, um, some of these is when the traditional media, we don't have access to the newspapers, and then the media was strictly controlled, regulated by the government. There was no avalanche of private media as we have it today. It never occurred to me that some of these issues are actually um, happening. And so uh, I think to that extent, uh, we must give credit to social media, which has helped to a large extent to help at least before now, I think we can see more women using, deploying these platforms to even say their, uh, that, tell their stories and attracting interventions uh, here and there. So um, and I also think comfort seems to be putting too much of the blame on the women. I think the way the society is structured um, and this, the whole stigma and blame and guilt that goes around um, people who come out to say what they have passed through in the hands of any form of um, abuse, uh, you might not want to uh, blame women so much. And so um, that is how I, I am seeing it. And then also, the, uh, her proposition that um, we should move uh, the punishment from 14th imprisonment to castration. I, I'm, I'm a lawyer, and <laughs> I'm a lawyer, and I think that might be too extreme in terms of um, uh, well, the theories okay, of punishment. Much. I might not, I, I might not talk about the extremism of the punishment, but I want to hound on your point about how the men have a lot to do with this subject matter. Yeah. I must tell you, although I'm, yes, I'm highly educated, I've accomplished a lot, so many times that I have some very strong position yeah. on some issues, I always sit back and say, if I vocalize my point, what would my husband say? How will my husband feel? Right. In the office, I'm a female boss, I work in the public sector. Yeah. And of course, I see a lot of this passing side comments that actually very irritating to me, to my, of course, lower subordinates. And I've mentioned it a few times, but at some point in time, guess what? I have to just stop saying it because, of course, the female subordinate just laughs along and I'm on my seat completely irritated because this guy is passing a comment about your buddy and you're like, they do it all the time now. So yeah. the question is, at what point am I stepping out of my own lane? Yeah, well, you, so many things are actually, you know, now deciding how far Ola Emi can go with a position. There's something that we call the Stockholm um, syndrome. syndrome. Of course. Uh, uh, you just go along we, with your abuser. Yeah, you go abuse, abuser. Yeah, yeah, yes. But let me ask Comfort something. But that's what I'm saying, Don't you Joe? think we should and then focus on our girls, bringing up our girls to be stronger women? What do you think about that? Focusing on the future. Yes, we've done some things wrong in the past. But going forward, what do you think we can do now? Bearing our generation and our girls coming exactly. up. Exactly. So please tell us. And so for me that, and so for me that is it. When it comes to you know issues that affect you know people or a certain thing, we already know what the external problems are. We know who the aggressors are, but we need to focus more internally. And especially for me, in a time when there are platforms, there is a movement, there are pushes that give women the opportunity for them to latch onto. And my problem here is I fear that we're not using those opportunities strong enough. We, we're not prioritizing these things as 
things that need to be put forward. So I think also it's, um, it, and I said it's for me, it's an issue of strong leadership. If we had women, if I hate this idea of affirmative action, which is like creating this women affairs thing. Okay, but unfortunately that's what we have. So if we have that, why can't we have women who genuinely have you know, the interest to move women's um, issues forward? So imagine an Okonjo Ewela, imagine how in that, in that seat, we would have seen a lot more going, and I'm saying the action galvanized would have been able to make it easier for what you've just said, which is to strengthen our women, because we're going to now use her as our yardstick. I mean, women, girls get raped every single day, and who are the people in the forefront of keeping it quiet? It's the women. Okay. I don't want to spoil my marriage. Enough uh, now. <clears throat> Now, so for me, um, you talked Sorry? about the... You're saying we're not speaking out enough now. As it's happening right now, we're not being vocal about it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, I agree with you on that, but I just want to add that I think um, the advent, like I said before now, I think social media has to a large extent helped to... In fact, we remember what uh, the, lady, the lady that talked about the, um, one of these and entertainers who yes. go there. Um, Bisola. So, yeah, so I think social media has to a large extent helped, but I want to address the issue of um, the, the institutional response to this, okay, yeah. this social issue, talking about the Minister of Women Affairs. I don't even know who, who she is. I don't know who she is. So it raises serious concern as to <laughs> do they actually know what they are doing. This is a country where we have issues of abuse virtually every day. And yet the Ministry of Government, which was set up to be at the forefront of that um, issue, is barely, is barely seen. So I think um, you are right on point on that, on that institutional response. And I think that is what we, um, we have to really um, um, advocate make for. serious advocacy about. Because uh, we, in recent past, we've heard about the sexual register and, and all of that. That ministry ought to be in the vanguard of that um, movement and making all the necessary uh, uh, institutional uh, uh, um, um, collaborations to see that these things are actually and also happening. Our laws also certainly need to be, uh, to be rejigged because how easy mm -hmm. is it to convict a sexual abuser? I, I, I learned it's very difficult. Well, actually, it's very, it's very, 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 very difficult. Okay, that's a lot of berries. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, that is the way the system is structured. But, but what makes it that is that most times, because when people become victims of rape they don't, or any form of abuse, because of that stigma that, that goes with it, they don't come out on time to say it. And once time passes by, the, 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 the difficulty in proving some of this cool. becomes even more, uh, you, you, you understand. So I think in order to, uh, for the legals, for the, for, the, for the judicial process to uh, make serious impact, I think it, victims of abuse who also um, have to step up to quickly communicate um, whenever they, are, they, are, they, they become victims. Well, I think they'll be able to step up and quickly communicate mm -hmm. if we have a strong leadership. It brings us back to that you know, issue you, of the yeah, exactly. institutional response. Talking the about personality the behind women, the Ministry women, of Women, women Affairs, Affairs yes. should be fierce enough for her to have the clout yes. and the, the attention of the people. So when she speaks of that, this kind of thing is happening in our society. People it, immediately it, get behind it. it. They it, give her the support it, she needs. Yes, but also part of this also comes from the family, from culture. Uh -huh. If if we um, are culturally uh, we culturally believe in certain things, it becomes even difficult because from the well, they said the family is the uh, is the SI unit of the society. So from the family, we've already killed it. What 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 what, what else can even the institution do? It's a lot to get that person, when, that one when person. family has already buried the issue. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, our time is up for this segment of the program. The advocate is never complete without your input. Temi Alade Alamudun says, Nigerians need a reorientation of mindset for nation building, starting from our primary education, family units, and from grassroots. And we, Nigerian citizens, legislative, judiciary, and executive arms of government, must agree to put in, put in effective systems of government and policies that can build a nation regardless of political parties. Follow us on our social media platforms, on Facebook, um, that's Plus TV Africa, hash 
the advocate ng or on twitter and instagram at plus tv africa hash the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus tv africa dot com front slash the advocate ng after this break ejama is take, talking about our responsibility to produce local children picture story books that depict our culture using the likeness of our children stay with us <laughs> 